Spring is well underway in the month of April and the garden is really starting to come back to life now. So there are plenty of things which we'll want to start sowing in the month of April to ensure that we don't miss out on a successful growing season. But we do still need to be a little bit cautious though because April can still be quite a cold month with frost and even snow for some people. Some parts of the UK are getting snow at the moment. There's no real sign of spring for us to be honest. We're still waiting for spring to arrive. It's been wet, cold and miserable for us. So we're going to get things sown in anticipation for the warmer weather ahead. Here's some of the things which I'm sowing which you can sow as well. Remember to hit that like button if you find this video useful. So with all that being said, let's get right into what you can sow in the month of April. So we'll start off with the tender crops, which we're still going to be getting sown at home or under the cover of a polytunnel or a greenhouse because it's still too cold to get a lot of things outside. So we'll start off with one of my favorite things to grow, which I'm really excited to get sown. And those are beans. We've got some dwarf French beans, tender green, and we've also got my favorite all-time vegetable runner beans which I save seeds from every single year and I'm going to be getting these sown in nine centimeter pots ready to be transplanted outside during May after the last frost. I like to get a lot of things sown in pots and module trays ready to be transplanted outside afterwards but if you don't want to do this you can direct sow your beans outside in May after your last frost. Now what I do is I get a nine centimeter pot fill it with multi-purpose compost and then simply push the bean seed around two centimeters into the compost and give it a good water and then I'll leave them in the greenhouse for around about a month and by the time they reach a good size ready to be transplanted out it's going to be in the middle of May and that's usually our last frost date. Now with the French beans, I like to sow two or three per nine centimeter pot because I found they grow much smaller than the runner beans. Now the runner beans or the French beans can also be sown in these deep cell root trainers. I like to sow them in here as well sometimes um, if I'm not using the nine centimeter pots because they do have quite deep roots. Now with these dwarf French beans, I'm going to be successionally sowing them as well so I can get a continuous harvest throughout the growing season. So I'll sow some in April and then I'll probably sow some more in May and June as well. Now the next thing on our list, um, I actually mentioned this in the March sowing video um, because you can get them sown in March um, and that's tomatoes. Now March and April is the best time to sow your tomatoes. If you've not already done them in March, get them done in April. Any later than April, it starts to get a little bit late to sow your tomatoes from seed and then you'll probably want to start looking at getting some starts from the garden center instead. I've only just sown my tomatoes at the end of March because they grow so fast. I don't want a tomato plant that's too big too early when it's too cold to come down to the allotment and this is especially true if you plan on growing your tomatoes outside. I would generally say if you're sowing your tomatoes to grow them in a greenhouse get them sown in March and if you plan on growing them outside then April because you don't want to risk losing your tomatoes to the frost. Okay, so we're gonna get into the cucurbit family now and there's a few cucurbits which we can be sowing in the months of April. The first one being courgettes. One of the most productive vegetables that I grow, giving you a bombardment of courgettes over the growing season. I've got a couple of varieties. I've got Defender, which is a disease resistant variety. And we've got some yellow ones, some shooting star courgettes. Um, I found they don't really taste any different, it's just a novelty to be honest, but we're trying some climbing ones. This is a climbing variety of courgette. Um, yeah, April is the very earliest I would recommend getting courgettes sown because they do grow fast like tomatoes do. And I'm only going to be sowing a couple of these because a couple of courgette plants is more than enough. Uh, to feed a family of people. It just sends out loads and loads of courgettes and um, the more you pick them, the more they produce. So yeah, a couple of plants is all you need really. Okay, more cucurbit family 
vegetables here. I'm going to be sowing some pumpkins. Uh, this is an eating variety called Crown Prince. Uh, the first time I'm ever trying this one. Um, I've heard some really good things about this one. Uh, so yeah, whatever variety of pumpkin you want to grow, get them sown in April. Okay, another cucurbit, more cucurbits. Um, butternut squash. I already sowed some of them quite early actually because I found the butternut squash take quite a while to get going. So I've got some nice looking plants at home under the grow lights now. Uh, but April's a good time to start sowing those as well. Now if you're absolutely bonkers like I am, you've probably already sown your cucumbers. I actually did mine in February because I'm absolutely crazy. Um, I've got some nice cucumber plants at home under the grow lights now um, but April is a perfectly fine month to get your cucumbers sown it's still early yet um, mini munch is the variety which I've got at home under the grow lights and these are a lovely cucumber and they're really productive as well actually delicious and productive and I'm actually going to try a few of these as well some bigger cucumbers um, Burpless Tasty Green is the name of this variety. I've sown a couple of those, uh, but Mini Munch, I highly recommend those. So with all members of the cucurbit family, they all get sown in a very similar way. You could direct sow your pumpkins and your squashes outside in May if you want to, but what I like to do is I just get a nine centimeter pot filled with compost and push the seed into the compost around a centimeter or two on its edge don't put them flat because that can cause them to rot because the moisture will sit on top of the seed so yeah courgettes squash pumpkins cucumbers um, get them sown in nine centimeter pots filled with good quality multi-purpose compost and like everything else move them outside after your last frost date okay the next one the next thing which we're going to be sowing in the month of april is sweet corn this variety is called incredible and it's an f1 variety so i've got high expectations from this variety um, hopefully we'll get some incredible sweet corn um, it didn't do very well for us last year sweet corn so fingers crossed we get a better crop this year um, i'm going to be getting these sown in module trays I've got some module trays here and I'll just pop one sweet corn seed per module a centimetre or so deep and I just fill them up with a multi-purpose compost. Of course you're going to want to protect these from the frost, start them off at home or in the greenhouse and then move them outside after your last frost date. With sweet corn you're best sowing as many as you can. Um, there's 50 seeds here and I'm going to be sowing all of them and I'll be planting them outside in a block formation close together to improve pollination so that we get some really nice cobs filled with kernels. It's quite a common problem with sweet corn if it's not pollinated well enough you can end up with these sweet corn cobs that are missing kernels and aren't really that good. Okay, so we're going to move away from the tender crops and go more towards the hardier things. And if you want to, if you prefer direct sowing your things, you can get a lot of these direct sown outside in the month of April. But what I like to do, I like to get a lot of these started in modules under cover because I feel like I get a bigger head start. I've got more control, I can protect them from the pests because the slugs are going to be out in full force in the month of April. That's my preferred way of doing it. I feel like I've got much more control and I can protect them from the elements and the pests. So the first one. Where are they now? Oh, they're here. They're bonkers here. So these are the vegetables which are more frost hardy and can be planted outside just fine in the month of April. So we'll start off with carrots and parsnips as well. Now I know I said about sowing in modules, do not sow these in modules. I tried this a couple of years ago to see if I could get away with it and it was a disaster. So always direct sow carrots and parsnips. This is the only exception to what I prefer to do. 
I do not prefer to sew these in modules first. So yeah, um, I'm, not, I'm not too sure why garden centers sell carrot plants in trays and modules for you to transplant out. I've never understood why they do that, but yeah, they do that. Like I went to B&Q and I saw these carrots in modules in module cells um, and I didn't really understand what why they were doing that but, but yeah um, carrots and parsnips I've already got a couple of beds of carrots sewn I did that last week um, some autumn kings and some early nantes types so what I like to do with parsnips because I found they do take a long time to get going early in the growing season they can take like three four weeks or even more if it's cold what I like to do with them, I like to get a damp paper towel, stick it in a Ziploc bag, and then seal it, and then stick it somewhere warm like our boiler cupboard. And within like five days, they'll start to sprout. And what I do is I take them sprouted parsnips just when they start to sprout, and then I'll directly sow them outside into our raised beds. It gives you a head start of many weeks and also I get to control how many parsnip plants I'm actually putting out in the raised beds. If I were just to put seeds in there, I don't know how many of them are gonna sprout, but if I'm already putting sprouted seeds in there, I know exactly how many parsnips I'm gonna have. So yeah, parsnips and this variety is tender and true. Um, fresh seeds because parsnip seeds don't last any longer than a year really. They've not got a very good shelf life. Okay, so we'll go over some brassicas which we're gonna be sowing in April. So we've got some broccoli here, which we'll be sowing more of in April, a successional sowing. We've already sown some of these in March and they're doing okay over here actually. We've also got some cabbage as well, Golden Acre Prime 02, which is a really nice variety. This is a favorite of mine. And we're also sowing some greyhound cabbages as well. Some nice pointed cabbages, um, really fast growing one. And the other brassica which we're growing is Brussels sprouts. Now we've already sown some of those over here as well, um, but they didn't really do anything actually. So I'm gonna try them again and see what happens. Second attempt on the Brussels sprouts. So yeah, that's the brassicas I'm growing. Um, I decided we're best just planting the brassicas which we eat the most of. I'm not bothering with cauliflower or kale or any fancy vegetables like kaleettes, for example. I'm just gonna do the things we eat the most of. In our case, that's broccoli and cabbage, really, mostly. Um, we don't really eat many other brassicas. Uh, get your brassica seeds sown outside direct in your beds if you prefer to do that or get them sown in modules like I do. I always get them sown in modules. I pop a couple of seeds around a centimeter or two deep into some cocoa core or finely sieved compost and when they emerge I'll thin out the weaker seedling if more than one has germinated and then after a few weeks I'll transplant them outside. Okay, so the next thing which we're gonna be sowing in the month of April is some salad leaves. Really nice varieties of salad leaves in this mixed packet. I've already got some uh, mixed salad leaves over here which I sowed in February, actually, and um, I'm gonna put them outside very soon and I'm gonna get some more sown in April as well for some successional sewings and we've also got some rockets as well which we're going to be sewing in april too i found that salad leaves are better suited for growing during the spring when it is cooler when it starts getting into the summer months um, it either doesn't do very well or you want to provide some cool shade for them so they don't bolt um, so yeah i found it's much easier to grow lettuce during the early part of the growing season Okay, so more salad things here. We're gonna sow some radish outside direct. We're gonna sow these direct. And we're also gonna sow some spring onions as well for some nice early pickings before we harvest our main onions. Now I sowed my onions at Christmas, um, but you can sow them in January, February, March, and even April as well. It's still quite early yet to sow your onions. Now, whilst on the topic of onions 
You can get some leeks sewn in April as well. I sewed these right at the end of February and they're now doing pretty well. They smell lovely. It just looks like grass at the moment. These will be getting planted outside into their final growing position um, in a few weeks time. Now we're also getting some more beetroot sown during April as well. Now we've already made a couple of successional sowings. I've got some beetroot in module cells here, um, which will go outside very soon actually. They, they've got the first set of true leaves now and they're doing pretty well. I'm gonna get a couple more uh, rows of them sown in modules in the next few weeks, ready to go outside after these. You can direct sow beetroot outside if you want, but I like to multi-sow them in modules, um, two or three per module in clumps. So what I'll do is I'll grow them in bunches of two or three, and then when some of them are ready to pick, I'll pick them and then leave the other ones to grow a little bit bigger to a nice size. Now, April is a great month to plant your potatoes. I've already planted my first and second early as last week, um, but I'm gonna be doing my main crop potatoes in April. I've got a couple of nice varieties. I've got some blue annalise, which is an interesting one. I've never tried blue potatoes before, but I'm trying some this year. I've got some Java, which is an improved Sarpomera variety. I've got some Cara, and I've also got some Setanta as well. These are all blight resistant varieties because we do have a bit of a problem with blight. Um, they've been chitting now since February. Um, the first and second earlies had some nice big chits on and they've been planted now. Uh, but the main crop varieties, uh, the chits are a bit smaller, so they're still a bit off yet, but they're about a centimetre or so big now, so they're not too far off. So that's some of the things which you can sow in April and some of those things I'll be sowing as well. I hope you found this video useful. Please let me know in the comments below what you're growing in the month of April. I'd love to know what you're sowing and what's going on in your garden. Remember, if you liked this video and you found it useful, hit that like button because it really helps support my channel. And if you haven't already and you wanna see more content like this in the future, hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon as well so you never miss whenever I upload new videos every week. So that's all for now. I will see you in the next one. Happy growing and stay safe.